Hello everyone and welcome to your spiritual journey. Uh, this is Dr. Bob Dove and I'm here to help you along your spiritual journey with this particular podcast. Uh, I'd like to uh, first introduce you to uh, Peter who is with Studio Me and all of our uh, recording sessions will be coming from Studio Me here in Pittsburgh. Uh, so I thought it would be nice to get to know a little bit about what Studio Me is all about. So, Peter, tell me a story. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I was actually a customer here before I started working at Studio Me, and I loved it. It was a, had all kinds of great opportunities for the studio spaces and equipment rentals. But now that I work here, one of the things that we do a lot is we help people produce their podcasts and other media content. We do a lot of things, but a lot of it is podcasting. So we're happier here. <laughs> so, well, as you said you were a customer here, what were you doing? Well, I'm a filmmaker, and I was renting spaces out to do different shoots in the studios for my projects or clients or freelance stuff. But I was also renting out equipment for um, other shoots, I was in marketing for a while as well, and there were some commercials I was doing where I wanted a different lens, and the studio had it, and I just couldn't argue with the rates, honestly. <laughs> it was, uh, I couldn't believe what I could get, like, the best bang for my buck I could find. Yeah. Well, how long has Studio Me been here? Because I, I just became aware of them recently. After, well, since this past October, uh, it's been six years. Oh, so they, they have a quite a track record then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I heard about them through my son who would use them when, when he was working at CMU. So I wonder if you have any questions about what I'm up to. Yeah, well, I want to learn more about your podcast. Uh, you know, it's um, you've recorded here a few times, and I've got a general gist of what you do, uh, I think, but I want to ask you more about it. Uh, so your podcast is called Your Spiritual Journey, and I know that you're the host and you always have a guest with you. Um, what helps, uh, w what is like the heart of your podcast really about? Well, this all started, I guess, uh, when I used to listen to Krista Tippett on, on NPR in the morning, Sunday mornings at 7 a.m., and it was interesting to hear uh, different people's take on on their spirituality uh, and then then she went off the air uh, and I was involved in a spiritual group uh, over zoom during the covid <laughs> situation uh, and I say that like it's over but covid's not over I guess uh, and in that spiritual group, they asked us to describe our spiritual journeys. And when I thought about it, uh, it really made me go inside and think about, well, gee, what is what has been my spiritual journey? And it was a very good experience for me personally just to think about that and consider, well, what were the milestones and, and what led me to where I am? Uh, and that combination, I guess, of missing something that I could listen to about spiritual journeys and then going through my own spiritual journey and thinking about, well, there are 8 billion people in the world and everybody's spiritual journey is different. And everybody's spiritual journey, to me, is kind of interesting because it is different. And we all have something to learn from each other's spiritual journeys. Uh, it may be things not to do <laughs> and to avoid, or it may be voices that you know you should be listening to or voices you shouldn't be listening to. Uh, and that whole thought of how much we rely on our culture and our parents and the, the programming that we get from parents and culture and teachers and preachers and 
suddenly we find ourselves on automatic pilot, that we're living lives that don't come from inside of us. It's life that comes from outside of us. And once you make that realization, then you start to think, maybe I should go inside and figure out who I am, what my purpose is, why I'm here. And it's that internal journey uh, that really interests me. Uh, some people only get there uh, after a major trauma or when they get close to suicide and say, well, what am I going to do? You know, why am I here? I might as well just give up on it all. Uh, and at that point, they release everything, and they, f they find faith somehow. Uh, so there, there are many different journeys. Uh, each one, to me, has something to teach us. Uh, and like I said, it can be teach us what not to do <laughs> or teach us what to do. Uh, but I, I think... Uh, by listening uh, to people's explanation of what they've gone through, what they've been through, what their experience has been, and where they've ended up uh, is something that we can all learn from. It's a great interview topic because it's, on the one hand, so personal for so many people, but I've found that a lot of people who are engaged with a spiritual journey really can be very open about that. It can be a very intimate conversation. And I think that since your podcast is about something that you're very interested in, you're already starting from a great place because, you know, just having a podcast about what you're passionate about or interested in or what you would like to hear <laughs> is a great way to make sure that you're going to be able to keep uh, creating content and with these types of interviews, like, they've got to be very intimate and engaging. When you say spiritualism, though, sometimes people, um, whether the, some people conflate uh, religion with spiritualism, some people very much don't. A lot of people come from a religious background when they have a spiritual journey. Some don't. Are these all, uh, is there a particular angle on what type of spiritualism or religion are you focusing on, Christianity or Buddhism, or is it uh, a mixed bag? What kind of, uh, w what sort of spiritual topics do you have? And also, uh, does that reflect in the type of audience that you're hoping to reach? Well, I can tell you that word, mixed bag, <laughs> or those two <laughs> words, mixed bag, pretty much uh, encompasses it. I was recently uh, looking at a book on religions. It, it said, okay, here are the 10 most popular religions in the world. And number one was cynicism. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, yeah, that, that made me laugh too. I thought, okay, cynicism is, well, it ends in ism, right? <laughs> so... That's religion. Some people just, they're, they're total cynics all the time. Uh, and I, I see that as valid. Uh, one of the first three uh, podcasts that I've recorded uh, is with a Muslim. Uh, because I was curious about what it was like to be a Muslim in America. I mean... We, we get a picture from the media, and it looks like, boy, that's a tough road to hoe. <laughs> uh, and we hear about Muslim strife in other countries, uh, you know, ever since 9-11 here. Uh, you know, people have been very, what, what I would think of as people being anti-Muslim in America uh, but in doing that interview, what I learned was 
his experience as a Muslim, especially in Pittsburgh, was that people were very welcoming. People were very open. He felt very comfortable. In fact, if he went back to his home country of Turkey, he would be thrown in jail. Oh, how, <laughs> how, can, we, can I ask why he'd be thrown in jail if he went back to Turkey? Because uh, of the... Uh, strain of Islam that he follows. I see. Right. Uh, you know, he, he just follows a particular leader who has fallen out of favor in Turkey. And as a follower of that person, he's subject to being put in jail. So. One of the things <laughs> about America is although we have religious freedom, that doesn't mean that people are always going to be neighborly about it, obviously, but um, I'm very glad to hear that in Pittsburgh, you know, we have a great reputation of, you know, the Mr. Rogers friendly neighborhood kind of yeah. thing, and I'm glad that that's been his experience in America. So that's that's nice to hear. It sounds like you've created a really uh, welcoming environment for your guests, and I imagine that extends also to your audience as well. Uh, because even uh, like any podcast that someone goes on, there's they they are taking a leap of putting their voice out there, right, and talking about what's very personal to them. And the internet can be a ruthless place, you know. Um, but I think that's really cool that you've managed to um, uh, have guests on a regular basis because that's just you know scheduling is exciting, <laughs> and but that you've been able to. Um, cast a wide net when it comes to uh, the backgrounds that your um, guests come from as well. Yeah, if, if we look at just the, those first three uh, interviews, uh, the first one was a holistic veterinarian who is an ex-Catholic who is now... Uh, the head of the board of directors, the board of trustees for the Association for Research and Enlightenment, which is known as the Edgar Casey Foundation. Uh, the third interview, so I did the Muslim second, and the third interview uh, is with another ex-Catholic uh, who is very much known for uh, her writings about sustainability and her actions in that in that direction. And um, she was the director of the Rachel Carson Homestead uh, for many, many years. And most of her spirituality now has to do with being out in the forest and out in nature, and that's where she finds her peace, and that's where she finds her God. You know, I've, I've interviewed a, a Qigong instructor. Uh, I've interviewed uh, Reiki practitioners and people of faith who lost their faith and found it again. So there's, it's just a wide range of people and experiences and I find uh, that they intrigue me and their stories are of interest to me. As far as uh, trying to do the best by my listeners, uh, what I'm going to set up is a monthly get-together over Zoom where we can talk about what they've heard that month. So once a month, we'll get together and just chat about you know, what, those, what those speakers have said uh, what their backgrounds are, and they can ask questions. So, you know, it's difficult with the podcast because it's typically a one-way situation. So I want to introduce that two-way aspect, that conversational aspect with the listeners. And that sort of goes back to the inspiration for this whole idea where you had that spiritual group that would speak about this together. So it sounds like you're really also interested in building community around your podcast. For sure. 
Uh, I do have two spiritual groups that my wife and I lead online over Zoom. Uh, and we just enjoy it so much just, uh, just doing those kinds of things. So I think that we are about out of time. Oh, darn. <laughs> there is the possibility uh, of doing a lot more, I think, uh, as we go with podcast, I am having you video these mm -hmm. so that eventually we can we can put them up on YouTube. I'm not sure how well that's going to work. Mm -hmm. I have a condition called essential tremors. And what that means is that sometimes my head shakes or my hands shake uncontrollably. Uh, so you'll notice during, during the... Uh, the videos that I try to keep my hands under the table mm -hmm. <laughs> so that you don't see them shaking. Uh, but sometimes I get so involved in a discussion uh, during an interview uh, that I just can't help myself. Uh, so we'll see how that goes uh, in terms of having to, to edit those things and uh, for me not to upset the audience too much by... <laughs> by seeing that but uh we are all flawed and that happens to be one of my major flaws <laughs> there's a good chance that um it might have a different effect on your audience than you're thinking uh but uh time will tell and i'm excited to um, start editing these with you sometime uh, in the near future and uh thanks a lot for having me on here as well to talk with you about what you've been doing and I'm excited to see how your podcast continues to grow. Well, and I want to thank Studio Me for being here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you, to try to do this out of a bedroom in my house uh, would have been, I don't know, quite a challenge. Mm -hmm. It can be harder to get guests to come over sometimes. Yeah, though. that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sit down on your bed and have a chat with right. you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you much. And thank you, listeners. And uh, we will just move ahead. And I hope everyone enjoys what we're doing. <laughs>